Good morning and welcome to Nanaimo Alliance Church. Um, from my backyard, my name is Michelle Galeazzo and I'm here to lead you in worship this morning. The first song we're going to sing is Hope of the Nations. pray that you're with everyone this morning who is listening or watching. God, I ask you that you open their hearts to the message that we hear this morning. Prepare us for the message. Prepare us to want to share your world with all of the nations, God, with all people everywhere. And um, I just ask you to be with everyone this morning. In your name I pray. Amen. Hey kids, happy Sunday. Today our story is the Good Samaritan. Jesus told this story to a crowd of people after somebody asked Jesus who their neighbor was. They wanted to know that if they were supposed to love their neighbor, who does that mean? In answer to that question, Jesus said, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho when he fell into the hands of robbers. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him up, and went away, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road.
When he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. So too, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as she traveled, came where the man was, and when she saw him, he took pity on him. She went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. And then she put the man on his own donkey, took him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day took out two silver coins and gave them to the innkeeper. Look after him, she said. When I return, I will reimburse you for any extra expense you may have. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of robbers? The expert in the law replied, the one who had mercy on him. Jesus told him, go and do likewise. We're supposed to love our neighbor. And that means not just the people that we like, our friends. That also means the people that we don't get along with. Samaritans and Jews absolutely hated each other. So for a Samaritan to have been the only one to help that man lying on the side of the road, Jesus was making a big statement. The priest and the Levite, they should have been the ones to help. They served God in the temple. They knew all about what God had said, but it was the Samaritan that helped the man. And we're supposed to do the same. We are supposed to help those that are less fortunate. We're supposed to help people in desperate situations. Today in church, the message is all about helping people that are in desperate situations. And as a family, I'd love for you guys to brainstorm some ways that you could help the people around you, that you could show love to your neighbors. Especially right now, during COVID times, there are lots of people that are in need of our love and our care. So think of a way that you as a family can show love to people this week. And I challenge you to help somebody that isn't your best friend, isn't somebody that you're really close to, but maybe see somebody that you would have a hard time showing love to. I look forward to hearing all about the things that your family does this week. Take care. We'll see you next week. You are the light of the world, like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and then puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see, so that everyone will praise your Heavenly Father. Pure and genuine religion in the sight of God the Father means caring for orphans and widows in their distress and refusing to let the world corrupt you. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Good morning, Nanaimo Alliance Church. It's an absolute pleasure and honor to be here with you this morning. My name is Jennifer Miller, and I am serving currently as the Interim Executive Director at the Crossroads Crisis Pregnancy Center. Pastor Tracy asked me to come and share 
a little bit about our ministry, a little bit about my testimony and how I got involved at Crossroads, and I'm looking forward to sharing that with you. So as far as my testimony goes, I, I was born in Montreal. Uh, we moved when I was about three to Ontario. I grew up in Oakville. And I would say throughout my childhood, I, I didn't really have a lot of uh, religious or um, Christian influence growing up. I recognized during my childhood years that I felt God. I felt uh, a spiritual presence per se, but I, I had no teaching or any way to really connect that to Jesus or the Bible. Our family didn't really know any Christians and um, yeah, so I was probably about eight or nine years old and I was enrolled in a Christmas choir for two years in a row. The choir was probably four or five weeks long um, in totality and it was just a really sweet memory from childhood. I, I don't recall having the gospel shared. I don't recall people explaining who Jesus was to me. I just really remember the choir. But what I do remember is that that one little event made church a very safe place and fun place. And that is something that was really planted in my heart as a young person. So I continued to grow. Um, I would say my ne next experience would be my last semester of high school. I went to a Catholic high school. And again, I, not really a lot of teaching on the Bible. Uh, I wasn't Catholic, so maybe that's why I didn't have to take Catholic classes per se. Um, but again, it was a fun experience and it was a nice group of people to be around. Um, in 1995, I moved from Ontario to Vancouver Island, and I still pinch myself that I get to live here in this incredible place in the world. It's so beautiful here. And uh, I moved to go to Malaspina, that's now VIU, and do some university studies. While I was in university, I worked at Woodgrove Mall in one of the shops, and I befriended another young woman there who was a Christian, and we started hanging out and she at that time wasn't um, living a, a Christian lifestyle, I guess you would say, and was into the party scene and that sort of thing. And uh, one night, several months into our friendship, we were home very, very late from a night at the bar and we got to talking about God. And I told her, you know, I'm a good person. I'm gonna go to heaven. And she said, yeah, it doesn't work that way. And I can still see myself standing in front of the mirror in my bathroom and hearing her say those words. And I thought, huh, it was just a moment that stuck with me. And so I walked out and I said, well, what do you mean by that? And so she took the time to explain the gospel message, who Jesus was, the plan of salvation. And um, it was a story that didn't offend me. And she invited me to go to church with her the next week. And I did, and uh, that was quite an experience. It, the music was very lively. It probably lasted about an hour. There was a hot tub on the platform, and they were doing a baptismal service later um, in the service. And it just was a very, very different church experience than I had ever been involved with. But it felt good, and it felt safe um, and welcoming. And so I continued to go back. Um, I, over the next few months, uh, would spend quite a bit of time trying to stay at my friend's house. And the reason I did that was because her family were Christians and they would leave Bibles everywhere around the house. And I know it sounds silly, but I didn't know that you could just go to a store and buy a Bible. I didn't know that there was a Christian bookstore. I didn't know that you could just go to any bookstore and buy a Bible. So I literally would try to um, visit her as much as possible and stay overnight so that I could read the Bible at her house. Um, her dad was also a really lovely Christian man. He's a fisherman and so he would be up super early in the morning listening to Christian messages on the radio and reading his Bible. And it, it intrigued me that he was so interested after so many years of being a Christian in still learning about God 
and listening to his word and reading his word. And that curiosity just took hold in my heart. And I was very hungry for the word and I read the Bible a lot. And so I continued to go to church probably about six months. I was uh, going to Nanaimo Full Gospel. That's where my friend took me. And um, six months later, on September 8th, 1996, I went down to the, the altar and gave my life to Christ. And it's the best decision I've ever made in my life. And uh, my girlfriend came about a week after uh, I gave my life to the Lord. She came to my place of work and she said, I have a present for you. And so I opened it and it was a beautiful leather um, NIV study Bible. And she had had my name engraved on the front and it's probably, um, I'm not a big gift person, um, but it's probably the best gift I've ever received in my life. And it's, it means so much to me. Um, I'm so grateful that she shared the gospel with me. She certainly didn't have to. Um, she certainly could have just chosen not to say anything, um, but even though she wasn't necessarily living out a Christian lifestyle at the time, she still loved Jesus, and I could see that and hear that in her, and she, even in the place that she was in her life, responded to the Holy Spirit in obedience and shared the gospel with me, and for that I am forever and eternally grateful. She has changed my entire life. She has changed eternity for generations in my family. And um, yeah, I'm just, I really am so grateful and thankful for that. So uh, Pastor Tracy asked me to share a little bit about Crossroads and how I ended up there. So at Full Gospel in their front lobby, they had um, lots of cork boards with posters and things up. And for, I'm embarrassed to say for several years, I walked by this one poster that always caught my eye, and the poster said, we need volunteers at the Crossroads Crisis Pregnancy Center to knit layettes for babies. And my sister had taught me to knit when I was 16, and it's something I love to do, and I specifically knit baby clothes, and I thought, I should do that. <laughs> but I, I thought those thoughts for several years before I finally tore off that little piece of paper with a phone number on it and called the person and there was a little part of me that thought you know maybe no one's even going to answer this maybe the poster is so outdated this thing doesn't even exist anymore but I finally responded and called and so I was invited out to one of their steering committee meetings and um, they had already received their charity status they had had their incorporation completed and they had just received $15,000 of startup funds. And they were overwhelmed at that amount of money and they were making plans about how to open and how to use those funds. And um, that was in the very early spring of 2001. So I've, next spring will be my 20 year anniversary being involved at the ministry and it's, it's amazing. I'm so thankful that I've spent the last 20 years involved there in one way or another. So the following year, I was on staff when we opened in June of 2002 as the client services director. And I stayed on staff in, for two and a half years until I had my first baby. And then I transitioned onto the board of directors and have spent the remainder of the time there. Um, yeah, I think I did take one year off somewhere in there, but uh, yeah, I can't believe it's almost been 20 years and it's, it's just been amazing. Um, so Pastor Tracy also asked, why is it personal to me and why do you believe in the work that they do? And I guess the short answer would be that I love women's ministry. Uh, I love to encourage and learn with other women and grow in the Lord together. Um, and who doesn't love babies? <laughs> It's pretty fantastic to get to hold babies at work. Um, I do also believe that women and children are the most vulnerable sector in any community. So whether you're in a first world context or a third world context, women and children are always the most vulnerable. And so I really believe in the core of who I am that the more that we can do to support them, to educate them, to encourage, that population will make every community stronger worldwide. 
Uh, I'm also very pro-life. I believe that this cause of life is extremely important to the Lord. And um, yeah, I never take that for granted. Um, who is the Crossroads Crisis Pregnancy Center? So we provide non-judgmental education and support to individuals in a crisis pregnancy, post-abortion, or pregnancy loss situation through peer counseling with practical, emotional, and spiritual support. So if you find yourself pregnant, you could come in to see us and have a free pregnancy test. If your test turns out to be negative, we could have a conversation about making healthier sexual um, choices in your life um, and what that would look like for you. If your test is positive, we could talk to you about your options. And we talk about all three options. We talk about abortion, we talk about parenting, and we talk about adoption. And it's really important that we go through all of those things in depth and really educate women to understand the truth and reality of all of those choices so that they can make the best choice for them in their pregnancy. Uh, if you choose to parent, we have a tremendous amount of practical help. So we have clothing, gear, equipment, formula, diapers, just about anything you could think of that you would need for the first two years of life. That's our commitment to our moms. Uh, we also have a parenting course called Bright Course, and during COVID, we transitioned that program to an online platform, which is fabulous. So moms can learn before baby's born, after baby's born, all the little tools and things that they need to know to, you know, grow a healthy baby and um, raise a little one. Another service that we provide at the Pregnancy Center is uh, post-abortion and pregnancy loss support. So uh, both of these programs can be done one-on-one -on -one or in a group setting. We are, um, we are ready and available with both programs. The pregnancy loss support is something that is new to us and we have an official launch date on Infant and Pregnancy Loss Awareness Day, which is October 15th this fall, will be our official launch date of that part of the ministry, but we are currently available to help in that way. So if you know someone that's struggling with um, some post-abortion grief or someone that is struggling with pregnancy loss and needing support, it's a very lonely place to be. People don't know where to go, and so if you could direct them to us, so that we could love on them and help them through a healing journey. That would be amazing. A little update from COVID. So um, like everyone, it was quite a shock, um, but we've been very busy with the exception perhaps of the first couple of weeks that we closed in phase three in March. Um, yeah, we've continued to be very busy. So initially we transitioned to just doing roadside pickup for formula and diapers and clothes and those more basic needs, um, as well as being available to do video chats or Zoom calls for emotional support with our moms. And then on June 1st, we, in phase two, we rewrote policy that would allow us to have clients back in. And that was, that was really lovely to be able to provide a very safe um, and welcoming place for our moms to come we are very blessed to have a really big building and so there is lots of room for us to be able to navigate safely and uh, yeah provide a context that they can in other areas where they're fe feeling nervous and um, don't feel like they want to go out a lot they felt very comfortable coming in knowing that we had such a big space and we could maintain distance and we had all the right protocols in place so that was great uh, we have seen an increase in our abortion vulnerable contacts from clients and so that's been a huge blessing to be able to speak into those situations, be able to speak truth and speak life um, and meet either on video or in person with uh, these women, mostly just women, the odd time there's men too, uh, considering abortion and just walking with them and talking with them and loving on them and sharing truthful education and prenatal information. Um, yeah, it's just so, such an amazing impact in our community. Um, we're, we're essentially back to being about the same client load as we were before COVID. And so 
that's good that we're still able to have the impact that we're, we had prior to COVID and we're still able to help our community in that way. Um, yeah, so that's that's sort of our, our COVID update. We've had, you know, a lot of generous donations from the community, the Christian community. We don't receive any government funding, and so we are fully funded by the, the Christian church, both corporately and as individual Christians. And uh, I would say that this time has been a time where people have been quite thoughtful and reflective about where they are giving their charity dollars. And I've received a lot of phone calls from people who've said, you know, I just really appreciate what you guys are doing and I want to make sure that you're taken care of. And that means the world to us that people are really, um, we've had such tremendous support over many years, but it's been so good to know that in this time that others are thinking about us and praying for us. And so, um, Lastly, uh, Pastor Tracy asked me to share how people can get involved with us. And so I would say the number one thing you could do for us, first and foremost, is pray. Uh, we really covet the prayers of the church in Nanaimo and surrounding area. We literally deal with life and death daily, and it's not lost on us when we get a phone call and a mom says, I want to have an abortion and we have the opportunity to say okay how about you come in and we talk about your options let's talk about abortion let's talk about what that looks like for you and that's not something they're going to get anywhere else our our social services um, system just doesn't have time to sit down and talk to people and engage with people and really go through um, the story of the heart and what's going on in their life and identifying obstacles and maybe helping them to overcome those obstacles so maybe they could see I could parent actually I didn't realize there were all these resources I didn't realize I could come here and get formula and diapers and find a community of moms that could help and support me so um, prayer is our number one ask um, Obviously, you can partner financially with us. You can log on to our website at cpcnanaimo.com. There's a donate tab, and you can partner with us financially and share in what we're doing. Um, you could donate or contact other people that you know that have small families uh, to donate items that we could give out to our moms. So literally anything you could think of that you would need for the first two years of life, there's... Well, the only exception, sorry, would be cribs. Cribs are the only thing that we're not allowed to take for insurance, but every other thing, clothing, toys, books, gear, anything you could think of, um, we would gladly receive and be able to hand out to our moms. Um, and volunteering. We would love for you to partner with us. We have had so many volunteers from Nanaimo Alliance Church over the years. This church has been a tremendous, tremendous blessing and support in so many ways to this ministry and uh, yeah just incredible volunteers and so if you think hey maybe I'd like to be a peer counselor and walk alongside that young mom that would be awesome maybe that's not your gifting maybe you would like to get involved in administration uh, maybe you would like to get involved by helping to organize and sort all that practical help stuff it's it's quite a big job to clean and make sure things are safe and there's no recalls and fold all the clothes and organize all of that. It's, it's quite an undertaking, but it makes a huge impact in our community. Um, maybe you're a man and you'd like to come and do some handyman things. There's always something to fix at the center. So we really do believe that there is a place for everyone. If you have a heart for this ministry and uh, you think it might be somewhere that you'd like to serve, I really encourage you to give the office a call and we can connect you with the client services director who handles volunteers and we would love to chat with you about ways that you can become involved. So that is, that is my, uh, what I had to share for today. And again, it's been an absolute honor to be with you today and share a little bit about who we are and what we're doing and how we're doing it and i hope to hear from you soon and thank you again god bless you
Please join with me in singing our final song, Build My Life. Thank you so much for this day and to remember your words, God. God, we live for you. 
We pray that you motivate us to share you with others, God. Um, we pray for that message of love to reach everybody we know, Lord. So I ask you to put that want and that need in people's hearts this morning. And we thank you so much for giving us Jesus, Lord. We pray this all together. Amen.